bounce rate. Everybody talks about this Google Analytics metric, but there's actually a lot of disagreement about it. What's a good bounce rate? How do I lower my bounce rate? People don't even really seem to have a common understanding of the definition of a bounce or a bounce rate. Hi, this is Andy Crestadina from Orbit Media Studios. And this video is a little guide on bounce rates that's gonna answer for you three of the big questions. First of all, what's a good bounce rate for websites? We looked at 500 Google Analytics accounts and found the average for you. So we're gonna set the benchmark on this once and for all. Next, how do you lower your bounce rate? People ask this all the time. How can it be done? What are the, what's the best way to reduce the bounce rate of your website and your pages? And first, we're really gonna address the big question of like, what is a bounce? Let's just define the terms. What is a bounce? At the end of this video, I'm going to explain the actual technical definition of a bounce, for which there's a lot of misunderstanding, but we're gonna start here. A bounce is basically a one-page visit. It's a visit to a website where the visitor sees one page and then hits the back button or leaves or doesn't see a second page. So let's start with that understanding and now dig a little deeper. Bounce rate is one of those fun numbers that shows up all over inside Google Analytics. You can see the overall bounce rate for your website by going to Behavior Overview, and it's right there, the aggregate metric. It's the average bounce rate for all traffic sources and all of your content, so that aggregate number is, as usual, the least likely to give you some insights or possible actions. The next level down would be to look at the bounce rate per traffic source, much more interesting. Acquisition, all traffic, channels, here is the so-called default channel groupings, all the different places people come from to visit the website, and each has its own bounce rate. So you can see over on the right, there's a bounce rate for each traffic source. Interesting, you can begin to see the variance and begin to understand how bounce rate really aligns with the intent of that type of visitor. Some traffic sources attract visitors who are more likely to leave than others. Each URL also has its own bounce rate. You'll find this under behavior, site content, all pages, and you can see that there's a bounce rate for every different URL. Whenever that URL or that page was the first page they visited, this is the percent chance that that person was to leave before ever clicking in the navigation or on an internal link to go deeper to see another page. Useful, interesting, right? But still, is that number high or low? Look at these numbers, they look really high. Is this a problem? Is this broken? What's wrong? It's like, uh, what's a good bounce rate? To find out the answer to that question, uh, we have the benefit of having built more than 1, 000, 1,500 websites in the last 20 years. We have access to literally hundreds of Google Analytics accounts. And we looked at 500 different Google Analytics accounts to measure the average bounce rate. We got a lot of data. We, so we're looking at a bunch of different sites in a bunch of different industries, B2C, B2B, and, we can, and for each different traffic source. What we were able to do from that is to actually uh, average it out and show you now the average bounce rate for websites. You can see it's a nice smooth distribution curve, which gives us good confidence in this data. And then when we go deeper to see more about these visitors, you can see that there's an average bounce rate for each traffic source. And visitors from some traffic sources are more likely to bounce than others. Interesting. And there's the number. The average bounce rate across all traffic sources was 61%. Does it vary for B2C, B2B? Not much. <laughs> This data set includes some hybrid B2C, B2B uh, brands and websites, such as a bank website that speaks to both consumers and businesses. When we break it down to show you like banking and finance, for example, uh, you can see that there is some variance of bounce rate across different industries. Uh, there's some usability reasons why these numbers are, uh, are the way they are. For example, food and beverage includes alcohol websites where the visitor has to tell you their age before they can get to the second screen. So there's kind of a low bounce rate there because they're seeing two different pages. But bottom line, here you have it, a benchmark. In average, once and for all, the average bounce rate for websites, according to those 501 Google, Google Analytics accounts, is 61%. Cool. Next question, how can I lower my bounce rate? For starters, if you are lowering the bounce rate on content pages, on articles, on blog posts, one of the great tricks is to know which of your headlines tends to get high click-through rates and then to add those headlines as related links into articles. In other words, leverage your high click-through rate headlines. If you're wondering which of your headlines gets high click-through rates, you can use a tool like 
Buffer or any, I think like probably Facebook and Twitter and all these tools have their own insights and, and analytics within them. And you can quickly see which content, which headlines, which social posts tend to get more engagement than others. These clues will tell you that these are the things that people like to click on, that these are things that trigger the psychology of the interaction, tapping and clicking, uh, that can help you reduce your bounce rate by guiding you on knowing exactly what to inject into that visitor's field of vision to get them to click. That's basically, you know, social is a, a lab for uh, getting data on visitor interactions, right, on, on uh, user psychology. Add lots of formatting. Anything that you do to keep the scan reader flowing is going to be good at keeping your bounce rate down because the longer the visitor's on the page, the more likely they are to see something that they'll engage with and click to see another page. That's the whole point, right? It's to lower bounce rate is to get them to click on something. So adding formatting keeps that person engaged, flowing through the content. And by this, I mean headers, subheaders, leverage bullet lists and numbered lists, bolding, italics, internal links, lots of images, you really want to just keep that person on the page as long as possible. Avoid long, blocky paragraphs. Those are terrible for your bounce rates. Examples? I'll just take this, this piece, which I've referred to just a minute ago. What's a good bounce rate? So the headline, giving people a reason to scroll down. Short paragraphs, giving them a sense for what's coming. A block quote. Images. And as you scroll through this piece of content, you can tell there's a contributor quote. I'm not just adding an image, I'm trying to add something of visual interest at every scroll depth. Look, as soon as one image goes away, the next image appears. In other words, if you panned out and saw the whole thing, there should be something interesting to look at, <laughs> even at this distance. So you can see that uh, images and video can have that big, uh, that big impact. Uh, it's going to make a big difference. Also, just adding video. Here's an example. How to improve, it's an article about Google, about SEO. This has a video right here at the top. Now, that video, we actually have tracked the interactions, the play, the play button clicks on this video. We've got uh, other content that explains how to do that. Look on our YouTube channel or uh, on, our, on our site, you can find how to track video views using Google Tag Manager to track that. So I've got a, a tag in here, GA event for YouTube, embedded YouTube videos. And I'm actually going to measure the percentage of people who engage with that video and how they're different. Here I have it all set up. I've got two different segments, one for people who do and people who don't watch. And look at the difference in the bounce rate. This is proof positive that adding video can reduce the bounce rate because people who do and don't watch the video, the difference in bounce rate is like 20%. Okay? In this example, adding video to content can reduce the bounce rate on that piece of content by something like 20%. Big difference. Another tip I have for reducing your bounce rate is if for content marketing pages, for articles, remove the dates from your blog. <laughs> this is controversial advice, but uh, you can imagine immediately why it would make a difference. Uh, I know that as readers, you know, we all want to see what the date is on something. Uh, as a publisher, uh, you can still have the date. You can put it in the headline, put it in the body text. But when your template forces you to show a date, that means all of your content is slowly aging in a visible way. Kind of shows the, you know, the, the, the age lines. Here's an example uh, on a popular blog. Look, nice headline, nice image, but look at the date, 2014. Hmm, maybe I can find a different article that's more recent on this topic. But really, look at the topic. Thought B2B thought leadership, that doesn't change every day. This is evergreen content. So if your content strategy is to publish evergreen content, it may not be helping you to have a blog template that forces you to show the date on the blog. Uh, so that's an idea to lower your bounce rates. Another one, choose your social widgets carefully. If your social media widgets and your share buttons have uh, a counter on them and you don't get a lot of shares, this is that called negative social proof. That's telling people that your blog is unpopular. <laughs> Those goose eggs across the bottom there, not helpful for the bounce rate. I, the visitor looks at this and immediately thinks, hey, I could go read a different article, something that has uh, maybe uh, more engagement on it, something that it kind of people have you know, given thumbs up to. Finally, my fifth, my fifth tip for reducing your bounce rate is to simply increase traffic from low bounce rate sources. Actually, kind of obvious. You can lower your overall bounce rate by increasing traffic from any traffic source where the bounce rate isn't as high. Remember, I said that you can see the bounce rate for any traffic source in the acquisition all traffic channels report. 
Any of these you can drill down, by the way, so organic, direct, social, referral. The average social bounce rate is 78%, hmm, kind of high. But when I drill down into that to see the specific sources of traffic, I can see that it varies quite a bit. Look, the traffic from YouTube bounces at a much lower rate. Anything I can do to increase traffic from YouTube to the website will lower my overall bounce rate. So when you're doing promotion for content, you can deliberately favor channels that tend to attract visitors who are more engaged, in other words, have lower bounce rates, and that can be a tactic to actually reduce your overall bounce rate from your website. This brings us to our third and final question, which is, what really is a bounce? What's the true definition? And I want to go into this just briefly because I think most people really don't know. Uh, we've been using the common def definition of a bounce, which is a one-page visit. That's a bounce. The person came, saw one page, they left. Might have had a long visit, might have had a short visit. That's how people use the term frequently. Common definition, it made sense to use it up till now, which makes the bounce rate definition the percentage of visits that were only one page. Okay? Now, if we're going to use the the, uh, the, the lingo of analytics, it sounds a little bit different. A bounce is a one-page session. They call visit sessions. And the bounce rate is the percentage of sessions that were one-page sessions. Okay? So that's, that's that. But uh, in fact, the real definition of a bounce is something slightly different. It's not a one-page session. It's a one-hit session. And a hit is any time information is sent from, through JavaScript from your website to Google Analytics. And information is sent to Google Analytics data servers over there, um, not just when pages load, although that's always a hit. Anything a page loads, the JavaScript gets triggered and the data is sent to analytics that someone is visiting this page. But also for another type of hit, another moment at which data is sent to analytics, which is called an event. So what is an event? An event is any time that you set up a little bit of programming to track something that is not a page view interaction. For example, look at this mocked up page. It's got a carousel. You can click on that. It's got jump links. You can click on that. It's got a uh, leave and go buy it on Amazon. It's got a drop down menu. It's got, you can change the sizes. You can click to enlarge. You can share it. You can watch that video. You can expand those content areas. You can click on tabs. You can integrate, you can interact with a map. Download a PDF, you can download a doc, you can click to email, you can interact with chat, you can leave a comment, you can scroll. Which of those were page view interactions? None of them. None of those are clicks that count, unless of course you set up events. And event tracking is something that I'd already mentioned just a second ago. I said that I knew what percentage of people watch that video and how they engage differently. You saw me create the segments for the video watchers and those that didn't watch. I did that event set up using Google Tag Manager, which is a function of the tag. So here's my tag, it's an event. Events have categories, actions, and labels. But there's a little drop down in here, which is by default set to false. And that means that when this event gets triggered, it's considered an interaction. It's a hit that sends data to analytics and affects your bounce rate. If you create events and you leave this set to false, those events are now affecting your bounce rates. And the definition of bounce on your website just changed forever. Your Google Analytics data will forever have a different def definition of bounce. If you like the definition of bounce as being a one-page visit, then at any time you create an event, make sure to set non-interaction hit to true, which will keep that interaction and that event being triggered from affecting your bounce rates. This is useful for people who want to create an adjusted bounce rate which isn't just people who came and saw just one page, but people who came and saw one page and left quickly. So there are lots of analysts who make uh, event tracking such that they can see the people who came and spent 15 seconds or less. That's a, that's a bounce. That's their definition of bounce. That's called an adjusted bounce rate, and they do so using events. So there you have it. That was a quick but kind of complete guide on bounces. And finally, a once and for all answer to that question of like, what's a good bounce rate? Uh, this was fun to make. We hope it was useful to you. If you know anybody else who has questions about this, feel free to send this video along. And uh, we're building a little library of content here. Uh, so subscribe to this channel if you found this useful. Uh, again, this is Andy from Orbit Media. Uh, see you next time.